Okay, you're doing everything right, you've lost a few pounds or more, but suddenly you hit a plateau and you feel completely stuck. If you wanna get the weight moving again, we've got some really good strategies for you today, so stay tuned. I'm Jane, I'm here with Stephanie, and we're the Nourishing Gurus, and we help women over 50 stop yo-yo dieting in a healthy, sustainable way and feel really good in their bodies again. So hitting a plateau during weight loss is very, very common, but most women get so frustrated and wanna throw in the towel when this happens. We see this time and time again. If you're putting in the effort and you're not seeing the results you want, well, we understand. But we also know that there are lots of reasons this could be happening. So we have nine great tweaks for you today that's gonna to help you get the ball rolling again and be sure you're addressing all nine to get the best results. So let's dive into number one. We used to think this was obvious, but with all the women that we've worked with over the years, we have noticed that most of them do not get enough protein. And this is absolutely critical for weight loss and continuation of weight loss. So you may think you're getting enough, but most women are not. Protein needs are higher in more active women, but even for a sedentary woman, you wanna get at least 65 grams. And if you're active, it could go up to 90 or even 100 grams a day. So as we age, our protein needs actually increase. And during menopause, there's a natural decline in estrogen levels, which causes a loss of muscle mass and strength. So a good dose of protein has been shown to help prevent muscle loss that occurs with aging. And keep in mind that if you don't get enough protein, your body is gonna break down its own lean tissue mass. So that's gonna make matters worse because that interferes with your metabolic rate. Your metabolism goes lower. And then when you go off the diet, even if you've lost a few pounds, you're gonna end up gaining everything back as fat. Lean mass is protective in so many other ways as well in terms of our overall health, neurotransmitters when we're injured. Protein, again, it's been shown to boost weight loss and maintain long-term healthy, steady blood sugar levels. So it's also really helpful when you're prone to cravings because it is the most satisfying macronutrient. So aim for at least 20 to 25 grams per meal and you're gonna find it's gonna be very helpful for cravings and also pushing that weight loss down the right path again. Okay, next up, eat more plants. So aside from the obvious fact that plants will help fill you up without providing excess calories, Plants are also a driving force behind reducing inflammation in the body. So inflammation actually drives metabolic syndrome, and that is implicated in heart disease, arthritis, dementia, so many more diseases, and also drives weight gain. So inflammation also shuts down the signaling of leptin, and leptin is the hormone that tells you you've had enough to eat. So you really want to avoid inflammation and one of the best ways to do that is with more plants. So you could aim for four cups a day of cooked vegetables or do a mix trying to get six, seven, eight servings of vegetables a day. And a serving of vegetables would be if it's leafy greens a cup uh, or other vegetables would be a half cup that is a serving. So track how many vegetables you're eating and bump it up by one, two, or three servings per day if you can. And so just start thinking with every meal that you're having, oh, can I add some veggies here? Whether it's breakfast, throwing things into a smoothie, lunch, of course, salad, or just cutting, cooking some steamed vegetables, and of course, dinner, but also for your snacks, think veggies. Another fact is that diverse plant fibers promote health of the microbiome. And we are seeing more and more research about the health of the microbiome affecting our weight. So again, go back and eat more plants. All right, next up is avoid too many diet foods. So you may think you're reducing calories and eating foods like low fat salad dressings, diet jello, premier protein, low carb wraps. You might think those are the way to go, but really they are loaded with chemicals, food dyes, artificial sweeteners, and so many other things that can cause inflammation in the body. So remember what I was just saying about inflammation? And these diet foods can actually damage the cells, which interferes with our fat burning process. Additionally, our bodies don't really even recognize these diet foods. 
We've had so many clients that came to us eating a low calorie diet with lots of diet type foods and not having results. But when we switched them to a more whole foods, clean type diet with even similar calorie content and sometimes even more, that is when they were finally able to start really shedding weight. All right, so skip those diet foods. All right, let's move on to number four. Be sure you're eating enough. That might sound really strange, but over restricting calories causes your metabolism to shut down. So this is a genetic result of your body preventing too much breakdown of fat during times of too few calories. This is really common with women who just over restrict. Your body goes into protective mode. And if anything, it accesses your muscle tissue preferentially over fat. Ladies, you don't want this to happen. This, this leans into your good calorie burning potential. So the last thing you want to happen is decreasing your metabolic rate and digging into your muscle tissue. So it seems counterintuitive, but once you start increasing the calories slightly, your body then feels comfortable letting go of stored fat that isn't needed. So one of the things we really look at is to make sure our women aren't underfeeding themselves. Okay, number five to breaking the plateau is to stop nighttime eating. This seems really obvious, but we, we have this other angle on it. So we often see women who've changed their eating habits to like where their nighttime snack is healthier. So instead of ice cream or cookies, they're having an apple and peanut butter or carrots and hummus, and they're making a better change. But the truth is they're not really physically hungry. They're just feeding into this habit of nighttime eating. We have seen the best results when there's fasting from dinner to your first meal the next day. So if you find that you're having a nighttime snack and it's not something that you actually really need, it's more just out of habit, then take a really hard look at that and practice fasting from dinner to your first meal. And that should make a big difference. You want to have a minimum of a 12 hour fast between dinner and your first meal of the day. Again, our bodies are designed to fast overnight rather than working and digesting our food, even if it's something healthy. So for instance, if you finish dinner at seven, you don't want to have your first meal till at least seven in the morning or even nine is better. So if you've been having a healthy nighttime snack, but it's something you don't really physically need and you can fall asleep without it, then ditch that for a few days and see if you don't notice any progress. Okay, number six, this dovetails on the night snacking is just to watch the snacking in general. So we find women when they're embarking on like a weight loss plan that they, again, switch their overall snacking to maybe something healthier, which is great. Again, if you're physically hungry. So you want to make sure that you're giving your body enough time between eating, track your food for a few days, take, you know, do a food journal and notice, am I leaving enough time between meals before I go back to eating again? So our rule of thumb is minimum three hours, if not four sometimes five, depending on how hearty your meal was before. So if you've had breakfast at nine and you're back in the kitchen at 11, that's not okay. You're, you probably haven't either had a big enough breakfast or you're just snacking out of habit or there's some kind of emotional need. So a good schedule, breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner is really common. Or again, it's up, everybody's body's a little bit different. So you have to kind of see what works for you but just make sure that when you are turning to food that it's out of true hunger and not an emotional need. So watch the snacking. All right, next up is switch up your exercise and don't overdo it. Don't over exercise, really listen to your body. If you're really having a hard time recovering every day, it's time to reevaluate. You don't want to be injured and it's causing stress on your body, which can actually create a higher amount of cortisol which too much cortisol in the body can lead to more belly fat. Exercise is so important. Jane and I are huge fans of exercise, but sometimes you just need to switch it up. You need to step back a little bit, reevaluate, maybe talk to a trainer. Strength training is so important these days, as is maybe a little bit of burst training. Those are more the things you want to go for. We are finding and reading more and more that hours and hours on the elliptical is just not going to cut it. Definitely... You want to look at the type of exercise you're doing, look how your body is responding to it and reevaluate. One more note is we've often uh, talked to people who say, oh, I need to get my exercise in. The only time I can do it is at 10 o'clock at night. And we would suggest finding another time because that is the worst time to exercise. That's going to affect your sleep. 
that is the time your body, you want your body to be winding down. So we would suggest switching that and not exercising right before bed or at night even. All right, having said that about sleep, the next tip is get good quality sleep. Do the best you can. We know it's not always easy to get enough sleep, but one thing you should definitely be doing is prioritizing your sleep. Get to bed at a reasonable hour. Hopefully you can sleep through the night, but there's been research that found that actually when you don't sleep enough, it's almost like taking steroids. It has the same effect on your body. So you want to start cutting out the binge watching late at night. I know I'm guilty sometimes, just need to do one more thing or this or that right before I go to bed. But I've gotten to the habit up where I'm just like, nope, it's time to go to bed. I'm tired. That's it. I'm going to sleep and do what you can to get quality sleep. We have videos on getting better sleep. So again, check that out from the link below. And of course, another thing that causes the weight loss plateau is stress. So we need to prioritize reducing stress. And of course you can't reduce the stress in your life. There's not too much that you can do about things that are uh, happening on the outside. So get in touch with how much time you're really giving yourself to relax and feel good. Consider meditating, a whiff of an essential oil that can really quickly bring down the stress feelings because our sense of smell goes directly to our emotion center in our brain. So really learn ways to reduce stress. And again, we have lots of ways to do that. So we will give you links below for that. So if you're really ready to stop going on and off diets and would like our help, check out the link for our Simply Nourished program below. We would love to get on a quick chat with you to see if it's right for you and see how we can help. So as always, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. And if you know somebody who would benefit from this information, please share it. And also give us a like, a comment below what you did like and what you gained from this subscribe and hit the bell to be notified because we have even more helpful tips for living healthy after 50 and we create new videos each week.